It is snowing in Pflugerville in January. So while you watch me put this thing together, let me give you the backstory. Uh, I live in North Austin, and during the blizzard in February, I lost power for five days. Um, I had a big battery bank, uh, but I didn't have the right inverter and uh, didn't have the right solar panel set up. So I built this uh, as soon as we got power back. One of the things that people will comment about is that I'm using lead acid batteries and not lithium batteries. To me, for the limited amount of use that this thing will get, it just was not worth the expense. Uh, the Mighty Max batteries were three to four times cheaper than the, the best deal on a lithium that I could find. I'm an electronics guy, but I'm just not comfortable building, ordering cells from Alibaba and putting together a BMS like Will Pros does. I would buy something pre-made and the, the price difference was just astronomical. Also, lithium batteries don't like the cold, whereas lead acid batteries are much more tolerant. So, that's the choice that I made. I understand if you disagree. Something that isn't shown on the video is how I store this. Now, I'm in a rental house, so this is in the garage, and I have an AC charger that I use to uh, keep the batteries topped up. I'll go out there about once a month and plug it in the garage, let it run overnight, and just make sure that the batteries are in good shape. So, even if we, if we had a storm that didn't have uh, any sunlight, I still have 200 amp hours worth of batteries that uh, I can run off my inverter regardless of the solar. Well, as you can see, I'm not getting much out of this, but the sun is nowhere near where the uh, panels are, so that's okay. So let's take a tour of the thing. So as you can see, this is a big metal cart that I had a friend make for me with 200 amp hour Mighty Max sealed lead acid batteries. Here on the front is a Rich Solar MPPT charge controller. have the common 12 volt cigarette plug and USB ports for charging phones and other 12 volt stuff and after going round and round about fuses and power switches I got this unified circuit breaker which uh, fills two rolls it gives me an on off switch and fuse protection down here at the bottom the input coming from the solar panel of uh, solar panels plural goes to a trailer plug style connection so I can plug things in and out real quickly. Here on the side you can see my pure sine wave inverter plugged uh, directly onto the batteries and then bolted onto the top. Piece of cake. Hello. We're going to finally do some empirical testing on batteries and inverters and current draw and see if we can get some real actual answers. So here I have a 100 amp hour AGM by Mighty Max with a DC watt meter hooked up in between going to a Best Tech 500 watt pure sine wave inverter going to our plain old ordinary box fan and let's see up oh, and in between I have a AC watt meter so let's get some real answers here right now I'm at 13.1 volts on my coming out of my battery so let's flip the inverter on <sighs> S 
standby current on the on the inverter with no load. Well, let me just make this completely honest. Zero load is just under 500 milliamps at 13 volts, or just about six watts. So you lose 500 half an amp just by having it turned on. My box fan on low draws right at 50 watts. Medium is 55 watts. And high is 68 watts. Which is pretty much what we expected based on what we saw on the manual. So that, that's, that's about what we figured. So what does that mean over here? Six amps at 12.5 volts. So we've got a, a pretty interesting voltage drop there, but six amps or 74 watts. Nope, I do not have nearly enough hands for this.